Hello everyone. Welcome back to the sessions on DBMS. Today we are going to discuss about implementation of atomicity and durability. These are the asset properties that ensure the reliability and consistency of transaction in DBMS. Now atomicity is one of the key characteristics of transaction which guarantees that every operation within a transaction is handled as a single indivisible unit of work. That is, remember, indivisible unit of work which says either all changes are made by a transaction are committed or none of them are committed. So, either you do it as a full or you just don't do anything. Durability, this guarantees that the changes made by a transaction once it has been committed are permanently kept in the database and it will not be lost even in the event of a system failure or a crash. Now, there are several schemes to implement this uh, atomicity or any of the asset properties for that matter, we have got several schemes. When we see atomicity and durability in particular, one of these schemes is the shadow database scheme. The shadow database scheme is a technique used for ensuring atomicity and durability in a database system whose core idea is to keep a shadow copy of the database and make changes to that separate copy. Once the transaction is complete and it's time to commit, the system switches to the new copy. The system switches to the new copy, effectively making it the current database. Now look at this. Now initially there is going to be a copy of the database where the DB pointer is pointing. Now, we will make a new copy and see to that all changes are made to this copy. And it is time to commit. What you do is make the DB pointer to point to this copy because all the changes are here. So, this will become the current database now. Now, this allows for easy recovery and ensures that the data integrity, even in case of the system failures, uh, the data is consistent and uh, integrated. Now, how it is done, let us try to see. Suppose there is an active transaction T1. Now, as we told earlier, a pointer called as DB pointer is maintained on the disk which points to the current copy of the database. This is the current copy of the database. Okay. Now, the transaction T1 that wants to update the database will first create a complete copy of the database. All further operations are done on the new copy, leaving the original copy untouched. No changes are made to that. If you remember, we always said that the changes or the DML commands also are always not committed or otherwise they are temporarily made. Once you say commit, then only they are written onto the database. This is what the statements we were making. Now, this is the uh, ideology. If at any point of transaction, if T1 has to be aborted, then the system will delete the new copy and the old copy is not affected at all because it remains untouched. You did not do anything to it. But if the transaction is successful, then the database system will update the DB pointer to, the, to point to the new copy of the database. Now, the new copy will become the current copy of the database and the old copy is just discarded. So, remember here when the transaction is set to be committed, the DB pointer has to be updated. Once it is written onto the disk, then only it is set to be committed. Now, how atomicity is maintained in case of shadow database scheme? We assume that transaction fails any time before the DB, point, DB pointer is updated. Here we said after the update only DB pointer is updated. That is after the commit you are ensuring commit only DB pointer is updated. Now, assume that before DB pointer is updated, your transaction fails. 
now the old content of the database is anyway not affected at all so even if the transaction no, when the t1 had to abort when you restart the system or system fails when you have to restart the system it is only going to see the uh, old copy that is because db pointer is still pointing to the original database content and not to the new copy so t1 can just abort by deleting the new database copy new copy so either all changes are reflected or none of them so atomicity is maintained now how about durability now let's say system fails at any time before the update pointer is returned to the disk now when the system starts again it will try to read the database pointer which is actually pointing to the old copy only and thus see that the original content of the database only is accessed so no effect of transaction t1 will be visible transaction t1 will be assumed to be successful only when the db pointer is updated assume remember so before updation if it fails when you restart and all it will read the older db pointer value itself so the database is as it is because we did not make any changes to the old copy now if the system fails after the db point update that is after successful commit of t1 now what happens before that all the pages of the new copy were written onto the disk because you made the db pointer to write to the or point to the new copy itself making it as the current database so when the system starts again then it will read the new read the new database copy itself so all the changes are permanent which is an assurance of durability and what are the pros and cons of this shadow database scheme anyway it is basically applied to maintain atomicity and durability so atomicity is all changes are either committed entirely or not at all which is maintained there durability once the changes are committed they are permanent even in case of system failure so we have even seen the example of that durability in case of okay now coming to the cons that is the drawbacks the disk io is the greatest to drawback because it requires more disk operation because of the separate copy now in the case of your large databases just assume even for a single transaction the entire database has to be duplicated a copy has to be maintained which is going to take lot of disk space and coming to concurrent that is we are going to discuss about concurrent or parallel execution of uh, transactions in our next videos there it becomes more complex to implement in a multi user environment because simultaneously transactions are running t1 t2 t3 now remember for every transaction you want a separate copy to be maintained so basically shadow databases are particularly useful for the systems where atomicity and durability are more critical than performance now you see financial or medical databases because you know in financial transactions that happens you assume your uh, gpay transactions or anything many a times we see that you get the message that transaction was done you even see to that your uh, database was deducted or otherwise you get a message that your bank account was deducted but later it is reverted back to you because maybe amount was deducted from your account but before it could update there on the uh, beneficiary's account the transaction fails in such a situation it is not a successful transaction so it has to be reverted it has to be brought back so remember that atomicity is very very important there because otherwise it is going to be inconsistent data data was debited from your account but not credited there so nobody is going to allow such transactions so in such situation you need to revert back and in all those cases this particular concept of atomicity and durability holds and then shadow databases will be useful okay thank you and we will see uh, concurrent executions or the transaction schedules in our next week